currency was the topic on almost everyone's mind at the G20 summit in Seoul. Now, Chinese stocks have fallen over 5% in the past day as foreign investors are free that interest rates are about to skyrocket, hurry to sell. Joining us now is Jeff Papp, senior analyst at Oberweiss Asset Management, and he joins us from Chicago. Jeff, welcome to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on. Thanks for having me. Jeff, I was wondering first if we could get your thoughts on, on the G20 summit. What, if anything, was accomplished? I think like most G20 meetings, not, not too much. There seems to be, usually with these meetings, a big buildup and lots of talk going into the meetings. Uh, the same issues that are widely known seem to be addressed, and then not too much result seems to come from it. Now, with that said, I think some things have, have occurred since the last G20 meetings, and most notably since June of this year, the Chinese talked about allowing the RMB to appreciate a little bit more freely. And since June, we've seen the RMB appreciate 3%, which is a pretty decent move for five months, but still nothing near where, where the RMB should be trading at. Uh, what sense do we get out of this summit now just concluded? We should mention that the G20 as a group refused to back America's push towards China and its currency. Well, I think, I think that's exactly it. Everyone's starting to realize how, how important China is to the global economic picture. So it's easy for people to say, well, China should, should allow the RMB to appreciate much faster. Yet at the same time, these are the same people that say the U.S. and Europe can no longer be the drivers of economic global growth. So, so it's kind of a contradiction that we're seeing right now, where on the one hand, people in the U.S. are saying, well, we need to push harder to China to let its RMB appreciate. Yet at that same time, we need China to drive and help our exports grow. So it's a little bit tricky, um, but it is understood that China is becoming much more important on a global scale, and it's going to be harder for people like the U.S. to push them on important reforms like the currency. Even, even though that push came from the president himself today, Mr. Obama saying at a news conference of China's U.N., it is undervalued, and China spends enormous amounts of money intervening in the market to keep it undervalued. The president's comments today then falling on deaf ears, do you think? I think so. And again, it, it's really because China's going to act on their own terms. And, and again, it, it's hard for him to take a stance, tough stance on currency, when at the same time, he's also pushing that we need our exports to go up dramatically. Now, we would expect, though, over time that with the RMB appreciating that our exports to China would become cheaper. Yet at the same time, there is important need to have China continue to grow so its wages and living standards can increase so they can afford more luxury quality goods. Mm -hmm. That said, I, I was in China the last two weeks and what we have seen is that people continue to spend and they want to continue to spend on luxury foreign goods. I can't tell you how many Audis I saw on the road and how many people I saw with iPhones out there. So we would expect over time as the RMB does appreciate exports from the U.S. and Europe to China would increase. Uh, talk to me then about quantitative easing because that came up a lot during the conference as well. And we did see a lot of criticism of the action taken by the U.S. Federal Reserve to uh, purchase that $600 billion in treasuries. Uh, the sense that quantitative easing actually might be more of a threat than a help to the global economy. What was your sense on that take? Did the Chinese tend to make their point on that regard? Well, I think they did, and I think theirs was mostly centered around one topic, and that is inflation. So what you were talking about in some previous stories about overnight Chinese stocks selling off hard on, on the back of worries that interest rates and maybe some taxes were going to increase. This is in response to inflation in China right now being at the little bit higher end of their liking. With, with quantitative easing, too, and, and what that really means is um, easing of liquidity conditions, we would expect that some hot money would flow from places like the U.S. into China where, where returns could be higher. I, I think the Chinese are a little bit worried about this. And that, now, again, this is interesting, and China can't go too far with this because exports still mean an important part uh, to the Chinese growth story, it's especially if we look at factory workers who are seeing their wages increase, and they're the ones that are really driving incremental consumption demand in China, which is going to be the driver for their growth for the next 10 to 15 years. So, so it's a difficult task for China to say that quantitative easing, too, shouldn't happen, it probably should happen to keep the U.S. consumer afloat so they can buy more Chinese goods. So it's a, it's a difficult line for the Chinese to walk. Jeff, was the trade balance or imbalance, depending on your perspective, was that adequately addressed at this meeting? Uh, you, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with the currency, but, but I don't think so. I, th I think, you know, again, this is something that over time is important to talk about and will be worked out, but it's going to take a long period of time. I think the one key point that you can look at, there's a lot of factories in China right now that have been built over the last 20 years that are simply too big and cost too much to switch out of. I mean, if you look at Apple, for example, they have huge Foxconn factories in China, mm. which would be impossible to go put in India or someplace where the infrastructure nearly isn't as, as, as built out. So it's going to take a long period of time, even if the RMB and cost increase for these things 
to be worked out. So China's continuing to export goods to places like the U.S., but it, it's just going to take a long, long time. Jeff, in our last uh, 30 seconds, uh, it's a rotating presidency of the G20. Now France's president, Nicolas Sarkozy, will be stepping in as, uh, the, uh, as, as the head of the, the G20. Uh, any sense on what the French president may be bringing to the discussion? No, again, I, I think it would be much like the U.S. presidents. What, what they're trying to do is find ways that they can work with China to greater increase their exports to that country. Everyone understands that consumption in China is going to be the driver of economic growth, probably on a global stage for the next 20 years, and everyone's trying to find ways to partner up with China so they can tap into that growth. All right, Jeff Papp, Senior Analyst, Oberweiss Asset Management, joining us this afternoon. Jeff, we appreciate your perspective. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. coming.